opposition to the extension of the sanctions against Russia, the European sanctions against Russia. Now we see that G7, USA and EU talk about uh, ex uh, the extension of these sanctions. Uh, given the latest developments, including those in eastern Ukraine, what is your position now? I'm a little bit surprised uh, about your question. I never criticized and refused sanctions the other way around. I'm in, I w I'm in favor of uh, a sanction in case of necessity. My approach was let's try before we uh, decide about tough sanctions, let's try to find a way for diplomatic solutions. That was exactly, by the way, what uh, President Obama and uh, Secretary Kerry said. Uh, there is still a room for diplomatic activities. If diplomatic activities are exhausted, if it is useless to discuss, to dialogue, then we have to decide about sanctions. Uh, I add, I would be happy if all the governments tell to their citizens that sanctions have also an impact on us, not only on the Russians, also on us. What do you think about the recent Polish and French initiative of creating a European energy community? Uh, for reducing the EU dependence on the Russian ga gas. Do you think that the EU should or could reduce this uh, dependence on the Russian gas? Uh, it is never too late uh, and I'm happy that now governments are discussing about uh, an energy union. The European Parliament is discussing it since years. And I belong to those who since years urge that we create such a union of energy which is making Europe more independent, less dependent from the energy supply from other parts of the world. The Romanian president, Ryan Basescu, said in a recent interview that you, as the president of the European Commission, will be far from the support that uh, Jose Manuel Barroso and uh, his commission gave to the Republic of Moldova, and that the socialists will compromise uh, regarding Russia's aggressiveness in Europe. Yesterday, on Friday, uh, President Basescu said again that for you the annexation of Crimea is an established fact. What is your comment on this? Uh? I'm a little bit surprised about uh, this aggressivity of President Basescu, with whom I cooperated during the last years, always very constructive. So I don't know why he is uh, suddenly so hostile to me. Uh, if I would mention the long list uh, of uh, phone calls and meetings and exchanges between him and me for solutions, for example, for access of Romania to Schengen, where he found uh, with me a strong supporter. Uh, so I'm a little bit surprised. I don't understand what is behind this. My interpretation is this is perhaps a part of the election campaign. I don't know. In this case, uh, what will be your position as the the future president of the European Commission regarding the Republic of Moldova? The territorial integrity of uh, uh, the sovereign countries in Europe uh, is untouchable. I condemned strongly the unilateral break of international rules by Russia in the fact by enacting uh, Crimea to Russia. I condemned it strongly by saying, and I repeat this here, uh, a Security Council member with a permanent veto right, putting his veto often by saying this is a break of international rules, is itself obliged to respect international rules. Therefore, I condemn strongly what Russia did. This is incompatible with international rules. But it is a fact, it is a matter of fact, what happened there. I said this and nothing else. And to get back to Moldova, the territorial integrity of Moldova, like Ukraine and like all the other countries, should not be touched. And if the Russians don't respect this territorial integrity, they break once more international rules. And therefore, I think sanctions in such a case are absolutely justified. This was always my position. This is the position, by the way, of the European Parliament with an overwhelming majority. Even more, I was surprised about Trajan Bazescu's uh, uh, observations. I don't know what is behind this, but uh, I'm a politician and I know political games and I think there is a political game played by the president. I understand. One of the challenges of the European election is the low turnout. 
Uh, the previous European elections in, in Romania, we had a very low turnout of only 27%. What is your message to the Romanian voters in trying to convince them to go to the vote? Mm -hmm. The European Union decides about a lot of things affecting the daily life of all citizens in Europe, also Romanians. Your life, as my life, is affected directly by the decision making until today. The appointment of the highest responsible in Europe, the President of the European Commission, was the result of a backdoor deal between the heads of states and government. Now, citizens with their vote, sending parliamentarians to the European Parliament, decide directly who has a majority in the European Parliament or who not, because the European Parliament votes the next president of the Commission. So uh, Romanians have a direct impact, a direct say what uh, uh, Europe they want, which kind of Europe they want to see and who should lead the European Union. And those who want, for example, to see that I am the leader of the European Union, the Commission should vote uh, for the Social Democratic and Socialist parties, those who want to see uh, Conservative vote for the party supporting the former Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Mr. Juncker, who is the candidate, or those who want to see a Liberal uh, vote for Mr. Verhofstadt, my recommendation is to vote for me. But what uh, do you think are the explanations for these low turnouts? The real impact of the European Parliament, the real right of decision making and the public perception is completely uh, unbalanced. Uh, our real political power is uh, not uh, perceived in an appropriated way. That's what I try to change since years. I'm on the road to, to, to show the European Parliament, to make it more visible, more audible, uh, more transparent. The uh, European Parliament is the only place where in the European Union, uh, not behind closed doors, openly is debated and decided. And every citizen can see who has decided how. But uh, the public perception is uh, not as it should be. Uh, I give you an example in my uh, private life when I meet my football uh, uh, friends uh, from previous times, from time to time we meet. They tell me what also people here in Romania tell me. They say, yeah, we know 70% of all rules are coming from Brussels. Okay. And then three minutes later they say, yeah, but the European Parliament has no influence. Yeah, but and 70% of the rules are coming from Brussels. Why the European Parliament has no influence? So this is what uh, is not in a balance and therefore I think once more Romanian voters should think the European Parliament decides about important things affecting them directly and they should not uh, refrain from their right to decide who are the people deciding about me. Everybody talks about the new powers that the European Parliament has according to the Lisbon Treaty uh, by electing the future president of the European Commission. How do you think the leaders of the uh, member states would react in the negotiations after the election? Do you, is there a risk of institutional uh, paralysis? I don't know and I don't believe. I think uh, if you count 27, I think, out of 28 heads of governments appointed candidates, 12 social democrats appointed uh, social democratic, 11 uh, PPE uh, included uh, Merkel and uh, other people appointed Mr. Juncker and four liberal prime ministers appointed Mr. Verhofstadt. So uh, 27 out of 28 members of the European Council decided publicly, publicly to support a candidate. And that these 27 then uh, tell after the election to the voters that was a joke. Uh, this is uh, unimaginable in a parliamentary democracy. Therefore, okay, the rumors spread over Europe by interested people that at the end uh, the heads of states and government would not take serious the vote of voters. I read it and I hear it also every day but this is uh, for sure not the case. In the situation you will become president of the European Commission. What type of president will you be or want to be? Uh, man who uh, as president of an important institution in Europe, uh, takes a consequence of his uh, experiences in my political life, especially as a mayor. I was 11 years mayor. And my experience is as nearer a decision making happens to citizens, as higher the acceptance and the support. My first step as a president of the commission would be a letter to all the civil servants of the commission asking them 
don't think is there still a corner in Europe we have not yet interfered to make proposals. What are we doing here? What could perhaps be done better on a local, regional or national level? To retransfer uh, action, to delegate responsibilities to regional, local and national levels is in my eyes a very important step to regain trust. When citizens see they have understood uh, there is a gap between us and them and they try to fill the gap, then I think we can regain trust. This is a, a, one example of what I want to do as President of the Commission, to open doors, to open windows, to make what we are doing visible for citizens and uh, accessible for citizens. For citizens. So, if you uh, uh, want to sum up with one word, I want to reform the European Union in the direction of more transparency, openness and participation. What do you think should be the priority of Romania regarding EU in the future years? I would uh, uh, answer the other way around. What should be the priority of the European Union towards Romania? I think Romania has enormous potential. I just in the morning visited uh, a fascinating uh, uh, nuclear physical uh, institution uh, cooperating worldwide with my country, with the United States, with the uh, with, uh, United Kingdom, ELI. Uh, and this is uh, a signal that uh, the country, the whole region, the Black Sea region as a whole, has an enormous economic and, by the way, also scientific potential. We had in the last 15 years a brain drain from Romania back. This is a chance to get people back to Romania. So the question is, what should Romania do in the European Union? What should we do in the European Union with Romania to develop the country on the basis of infrastructure, research, education? This is uh, in a close cooperation what we should do. One of the concerns regarding the European elections uh, next month is a possible significant presence of 20% of uh, extremist anti-European anti-immigration parties. Uh, what are the risks of such a presence in the European Parliament? Oh, we have them already today, yeah. uh, but they will get back uh, with a higher number. They will not get back with 200 seats. Listen, if Ataka has one seat or two seats uh, in the European Parliament, out of 750 changed nothing. If uh, Romania Mare has uh, one seat or three seats, this is not a big uh, uh, event. In a uh, sum, uh, they have today around 90, perhaps they will get 130. This is 40 more, but with 130 out of 750, you have uh, 620 uh, belonging to the democratic pro-European tendency. So this is an overwhelming majority. I answer not to reduce the importance of the development, but they will not block the European Parliament. This is impossible for them. The question is, are they uh, deciding about the public debate and the political agenda? And this is an appeal to us uh, to make concrete proposals for the solution of people who have lost trust because they have lost their jobs, because their children are unemployed and they have the feeling in Brussels they are discussing exclusively in billions, 10 billions here, 15 billions there, 200 billions here. For you and me, one million is an enormous uh, money, but for 96% of our citizens, 1,000 euros is an enormous amount of money. I want to deal with concrete proposals for the daily problems of the people with 1,000 euros. When they see the European Union cares about us, then they have also uh, an understanding that we have to deal with billions. This is what we have to change. And therefore we must make concrete proposals. That's what we have to do in the election campaign, because this uh, Populists, they have for everything a scapegoat, but for nothing a solution. And the uh, economic question. At the recent speech you gave in Paris, you said that you'll make the fight against tax evasion one of the pillars of the, your policy against austerity, and that you are in favor of a tax on financial uh, transactions. Can you explain this position? This uh Tax evasion, uh, Experts tell us that about 2 billion 
This is 2,000, uh, 2 trillion, this is 2,000 billion euros. Uh, are the loss of uh, the fiscal system in Europe every year by tax evasion. Imagine, if you would get 10% of it, you could already solve a lot of problems here in your country and in other countries as well. So the fight against tax evasion is uh, uh, relief for the public budget of member states. Uh, why did people lose trust in Europe? When speculators make billions of profits and don't pay taxes, but when they create billions of losses, the taxpayers have to pay for them. This is a reality, what people uh, see. And uh, they have to pay for the spe speculants. The countries have to pay for the speculants. The countries cut their pensions, they increase the taxes, they cut their salaries, and their children are unemployed. This is the reality in a lot of member states of the European Union. So tax evasion is a fight against this uh, loss of trust and a fight in favor to regain trust. And tra financial transaction tax, look, if you're in my country, in Frankfurt, one of the most important uh, financial places uh, of the world, if you go to the market in Frankfurt and you uh, buy a kilogram of tomatoes, you pay uh, uh, VAT. If you uh, buy or sell a package of uh, actions, you don't pay uh, VAT. So this is not just, this is the reason why we are in favor of a financial transaction tax, which is nothing else than a kind of VAT for financial transaction and bringing a little bit more justice in our financial system.